we had the opportunity to listen to uh, prolific speakers of their respective fields. Uh, we began yesterday with the welcome and presidential address by Dr. Mayank Agrawal, Managing Director, IMT Group of Colleges. Also, uh, address was given by Chief Guest Dr. Neeraj Saxena, Advisor AICTE, uh, Guest of Honor Dr. Adrian Bajpai, Vice Chancellor Atal Bihari Bajpai Vishwa Vidhyale Chhattisgarh, and Guest of Prime Dr. Amit Tatta, Deputy Director Atal Cell AICTE. So, continuing with the learning process, it is my heartiest pleasure to introduce our speaker for the first session of day two of online FTP, Ms. Ela Rai. Uh, Ms. Ela Rai is an assistant professor and a research scholar who is currently pursuing her PhD in the field of emotional intelligence. She has deep interest in research area in the field of emotional intelligence and has published many papers in the same field in Scopus and UDC care journals. Ms. Ela has done her master's in HRM and has both industrial and educational sector experience, which she wishes to combine in her educational journey. She has had the opportunity to attend various FDPs from recognized institutes such as IIM, Ramanujan College, uh, University of Delhi, and Amity University, to name a few, where she has gathered knowledge on uh, various aspects uh, in her education sector. Ma'am, I welcome you on behalf of IMT College of Management and request you to kindly start with the session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am, you are. Okay, uh, I'll just request a few minutes to share my screen. Uh, am, is my screen visible now? Uh, not yet, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am, it is. it was visible. Okay, just give me a second. Yes, ma'am, it is there. Thank you very much, ma'am, for such a wonderful introduction. And uh, thank you, everyone. And I welcome you all to today's session. My name is Miss Ila Rai. My profession, I'm an assistant professor, and I'm a deep uh, follower of emotional quotient. And this is what I would like to discuss today with you all. What is the role of emotional quotient in education sector? So before we begin our journey, we shall have an overview of it. So today we would be discussing what do we understand by emotional quotient? What is emotional intelligence? What is the importance of emotional quotient for faculties such as us? And how can we improve it? And then what is the importance of this for students? And how can we help them to improve it? And how can the institutions where we are working take steps to improve the emotional quotient? Now I'm going to throw a few situations for you. Just imagine a situation where your boss has increased your workload and suddenly you have to finish all your previous assignments and then you are given more assignments further. And how are you going to inform your boss? Or a different situation that your department is facing some challenges. There are too much politics, backbiting, arguments, which I think everybody who is attending this session could have faced somewhere or the other. And recently, they, because of all of this politics and everything, there was an outburst in your team from one of your team members. How would you handle the situation? Or another situation, for example, that your boss has provided you a negative feedback. Now, how would you respond to that? What action would you take? How would you uh, take this information, process it, and react to it? Or, for example, an employee is asked to do a presentation on behalf of their department to 40 high-ranking managers. And understandably, the employee feels nervous. How would she handle that nervousness? So answer to all of these situations, all of these problems, and many more is one, emotional quotient, also known as emotional intelligence. So to understand what is emotional quotient or what emotional intelligence is, first we should understand what is emotions and how does our brain process this info emotion. So emotion is involved in everything which people do your actions, your decisions, your judgment. A simple example is you come in the morning, your situation is that your tire burst on the way or you, you faced a punctured tire. Now your entire day could either go as planned or your entire day could go haywire. Throughout the day, you would feel frustrated. Throughout the day, you would feel unhappy with the situation just because one small incident which took place in your life in the morning that, my friends, is the emotion which we are facing of a situation throughout the day. Now, how does our brain process the emotions? For a very long period of time, scientists believed that emotions were not processed by the brain, but emotions were something which we felt in our heart. 
But after further advances in neurosciences and brain imaging techniques, scientists got a better way to understand the emotion, emotion uh, sorry, human brain. And because of that, they were able to distinguish between the emotional center of the brain. Now in our brain, there is one part which is called neocortex. That part is responsible for thinking and reasoning. And within that neocortex uh, resides our emotional part of the brain. So scientists was able to divide our brain in two different parts. The first part was logical brain, where we process all the logical information, we take all the decisions logically, we take time to take the decisions, and the data precision is very precise. Whereas the other part is emotional brain. Emotional brain processes all the emotional feelings or emotional reactions of the individual. Therefore, the emotions which we feel is immediate and the data is given as summary data to our, our mind. I would give an example to you. You see uh, some image which is very disturbing to you. There are two ways in which you can process it. Your first reaction, which is automatic and which would come uh, immediate, is the disgust feeling which you would get. That is the emotional brain which is working. But after some time, after a minute or so, your brain would process that information, process that information, process that image, and give you with a logical decision, logical decision, logical emotion. So that is the logical brain which is working. So how does this emotional brain works? Emotional brain works is that our visual image is transferred to our thalamus. I would not go into a lot of scientific details here because I understand we have uh, faculties from all the fields. But I feel that when we talk about emotional quotient, we should understand how we process emotion, how our brain process information. So how it works is that we have a visual cortex because of which the visual repository is taken and it is processed in thalamus. Thalamus is near amygdala. Amygdala is the emotional response of emotional response center of our brain. So thalamus sends the signals to amygdala and amygdala tells the brain or amygdala tells the logical brain how to react. So our reaction, our emotions come from the amygdala part of the brain, right? Now, after understanding how our brain process emotions, I would like to introduce you to the topic of EQ or EI. Now, what is emotional intelligence? Another example, let us uh, understand this, is we have a friend who because of we have a colleague because of some situation we had a, a, a argument with that colleague and because of that we were not able to communicate with them because of one small small argument we were not on same page we were not able to communicate we were not able to process our emotions and express it in a manner that other party understands that is the lack of emotional intelligence and that in action that is an emotional intelligence in action so emotional intelligence is the ability of an individual to identify what they are feeling, to evaluate their feelings, control them, and express them in a manner that other party understands. An emotional quotient is not only related to individual, it is also related how we manage our relationship with the others. So for example, if I have somebody uh, and they are feeling frustrated, so how I would be able to judge their emotions and how I would take steps to make them feel comfortable or to make them feel that they are safe. So it is the ability to recognize and understand emotions within ourselves and others, and the ability to use this awareness to manage the behaviors and relationships. So this concept came by psychologists John Mayer and Peter Selovey in 1990. So it is a fairly recent concept which we, which we are seeing. And according to them, emotions are the internal events which somebody feels that coordinates psychological, physiological response, cognition, and awareness. They gave a very beautiful definition of emotional intelligence, where they explained that emotional intelligence is the ability to perceive emotions, to access and generate emotions, so that one, it is assisted to understand the emotion and emotional knowledge and to regulate our emotions reflectively to promote emotional and regulate emotion, uh, to promote emotional and intellectual growth. So emotional quotient, they have two different uh, uh, points. One point on a, uh, at one point lies people who are with low emotional quotient and on other point, on another spectrum lies people who are with high emotional quotient. So how do we identify on what spectrum do we lie? 
so people who have low emotional quotient they often feel misunderstood they get very upset very easily small small situations make them upset and they become overwhelmed by emotion they don't know how to process emotion they don't know how to express it clearly and they have a very strong problem with being assertive with trying to define themselves with trying to prove themselves whereas on the opposite spectrum of this is people who are with high eq and they are those people who are able to link between their emotions and how they are behaving so for example if i am able to link that because i had a very unfortunate accident in the morning that my tire burst or i had a puncture because of that throughout the day i am feeling uh, frustrated so i should now control this frustration so i am having a high eq so i am able to link between the emotions which i am feeling and how i am behaving and in the under the stressful situation no matter no matter how many assignments i am given no matter no matter how many work load i am given i remain calm and composed and i am able to influence others to achieve a common goal and i can under uh, if i have a high eq people with high eq they are able to handle people with diplomacy so they are able to manage the emotions of others and because of that they are able to manage the relationships which they have others so they are diplomatic in nature they have a tactful nature wherein they are able to handle difficult people also so why do we understand it why do we focus on eq there are various advantages for eq one of them is that with the eq we are able to have good relationship with other people because we are able to understand the emotions of others we are able to build a strong relationships with them another advantage of eq is that it helps us to improve our communication skills i know how i am feeling and because of that i am able to put my feelings into words so i am able to express my emotions perfectly and i am able to communicate with others i have a better empathy skills and i act with integrity and because of all these following uh, all these uh, characteristics i am able to get respect also from others and eq not only helps you to become a better individual eq also helps to improve the career prospects of people and helps them to manage the changes which they are facing very confidently and very assertively they are people with high eq are able to enjoy their work and they feel confident and positive now there are various models which were given for eq these models would help us to understand the various components of eq so one was ability model wherein the uh, emotional quotient or emotional intelligence was considered as a process so there are four components of emotional intelligence first component is perceiving emotion how well i am able to perceive my emotion if i am feeling frustrated what is the reason behind feeling frustrated if i am if i am feeling happy what are the reasons i am feeling happy if i am feeling uh, uh, and what are the reasons i'm feeling angry so i'm able to understand my emotions and because i'm feeling angry because of so and so reason i'm able to manage my emotions i can remove the hurdles which are becoming in my emotions if i'm feeling angry because i i didn't i didn't get proper uh, credit for my work i'm feeling angry because i had a dispute with my teammate so i'm able to manage my emotions properly i am able to perceive the emotions of others also who are associated with me and i can put my thoughts into words and then another model was baron model it was given by uh, baron a psychologist with baron is uh, named baron and he said that there are five components of emotional intelligence first is self perception that what how i am feeling am i emotionally aware how, what emotions i am feeling what regard to have for myself so self perception is related to emotional functioning how well do i know myself the second component of emotional intelligence is self expression it is not just enough to know what i am feeling it is also necessary that how well i am expressing my emotions to so am i assertive in nature am i independent in my emotions am i able to express what i am feeling with my words the third component of emotional intelligence is interpersonal so from individual we are moving towards society so how well i am able to react uh, relate with others do i have good relationships with others am i empathetic in nature do i understand what others are going through then fourth uh, component of emotional intelligence is decision making do i let my emotions come into decision making am i able to solve the problem do i know what the reality is and do i take the actions to improve my situation
and very important part of emotional intelligence wherein emotional intelligence becomes very important is stress management that is the fifth component of emotional intelligence we all live in an environment where we are uh, surrounded by people who have a lot of stress and we ourselves face a lot of stress in our environment so how able how well we are able to tolerate the stress do we maintain optimism throughout the stress uh, period and are we flexible enough to change ourselves with the changing environment so emotional quotient affects your performance at your workplace if you have high emotional quotient you are able to lead other people you are able to excel in your careers it also affects your physical health because if you are not able to manage your emotions you won't be able to manage your stress also because one of the component as we have seen earlier is that emotional intelligence is stress management so if i am able to manage my stress i am a good i have a good emotional intelligence so if i'm not able to manage my stress obviously i will have a lot of serious health conditions i can have high blood pressure i can have low immune system i can have higher risk of heart attacks so it is very important to have a good emotional quotient to have good physical health also and then obviously emotional quotient will affect our mental health also because our will will be more prone to anxiety and depression if we are not able to perceive and manage our emotions and perceive and manage the relationships we have with others it also affects our relationships with others because i'm because if emotional intelligence affects how we are communicating with others if i am having a strong communication with others if i am able to communicate effectively and build a stronger relationship then i would have a success in both my personal life and my professional life and a very major area of emotional intelligence where it it is highly seen is our social intelligence how well we are able to recognize our friends emotion bring down their stress level balance uh, our social our nervous system with social communication and feel a part of team that is social intelligence how well we are able to do that and the basic of that is emotional intelligence so question which would come in your mind at this stage is why what is the difference between eq and iq that is emotional quotient and intelligence quotient so i have presented it in a tabular manner that eq is emotional quotient or iq is intelligent quotients in eq we are able to identify assess and control our emotions and those of others whereas iq deals with uh, iq is a score which is derived from a standardized test which assess the intelligence level with eq we are able to identify control express our own emotion perceive others emotion and use this emotion to facilitate thinking the use of iq is to uh, the ability to learn understand and apply the information skills and logical reasoning in workplace we see eq through team work leadership successful relationships initiatives and collaborations whereas iq could be seen with success in challenging tasks ability to analyze and connect the dot research and development the uh, in order to identify person with high eq a person is a leader who is a team player who works alone as well as who also works well with team iq is someone who is highly capable of processing strong uh, of processing hard information difficult information and delivering best results so what is more important iq or eq so at this question the scientists are divided in two parts some say that iq is more important than eq because they believe that eq is overrated and iq is a better predictor of success and some says from which team i also consider myself to be is that iq is something which could be developed but eq is something which you have to have throughout these stages of your life to manage your relationship a high iq would get through you to school but a high eq will get you through life now we come to emotional intelligence and quality assurance in higher educational institutes so quality has become a very catchy word these days and service has become synonymous with quality if the quality is missing in service then we cannot deliver a better service to our uh, customers 
and education in itself is very qualitative in nature we cannot measure education on a very on a chart on a standardized chart we cannot measure a teacher's effectiveness on a chart we cannot measure a class delivery on a chart so it is very qualitative in nature and it cannot be expressed in the terms of quantities the teachers and teachers are one of the focal point of education so if i have to deliver a quality education system i have to have teacher in the focal point i have to keep teachers who are uh, very well versed in teaching and learning environment because if i have a bad teacher my environment would fall automatically and it is very important to have a effective classroom management healthy relationship between students and teachers and to motivate our students to learn and these all situations are only possible if i have a highly emotional emotionally intelligent teachers so what is the importance of eq for faculties a bharat ratna dr sarvapalli radha krishna former president said a very beautiful line that teachers are the backbone of our education system true teachers are those who help us to think for ourselves and we all remember one teacher who always used to reprimand us who always used to scold us for our very small small mistakes who had no empathy no matter what difficult life situation we would be going through they wanted their work on time they they if we faced any problem we were scolded because of them instead of listening to the words that what is the problem i am there to help you we only heard the scolding these teachers were the teachers who lacked emotional intelligence now we understand after this example we can understand the importance of a good teacher in our life in a student's life a, a teacher if we imagine even if we imagine a teacher who is good then we don't judge the teacher by the uh, intelligence they possess we judge them by the relationships they have built with us we judge them by the empathy skills we judge them by the classroom environment which they were able to keep so all these factors which i'm stating are part of emotionally highly emotionally intelligent teachers teachers can create an effective learning environment with their sheer will and motivation to make their students more aware teachers are the one who are responsible to motivate their students so motivate their students in a better manner and understand make them understand the students behavioral and psychological well being they can also be sensitive towards their students disruptive behavior if a student is being disruptive in a class in a highly emotionally intelligent teacher would try and understand what is the reason why they are being in, uh, why they are showing such uh, emotions why they are exhibiting like this they can handle and deal with various issues that children are facing in a better manner another thing is that a teacher with high eq have good self regulation right the more self aware teacher is the more better way they can manage the children children have to manage many age related issues they are going through many different life cycles uh, life situations which they are not well equipped enough to handle so as a teacher it is becomes our responsibility that we show the control in our emotions and thus help them to control their own emotions another important aspect which a teacher should show is empathy because a good and emotionally intelligent teacher is not the one who is all only self aware but they also show the empathy towards their children towards their parents towards their peers and so on in today's environment the children they have they are equipped with social media they they, they are bombarded with the information and they go through various emotions throughout the day in one day they go through various highs and lows of life and sometimes students they themselves are not at the age where they are well equipped enough to handle those emotions so they need someone who understands what they are feeling what their emotion is and then guide them and in the process do does not judge them and that is the role of teacher in the life of student this is a key role of empathy empathetic teacher who makes a positive and everlasting impact on the student's mind in today's environment i feel that as teachers we have forgotten to connect with students we come we deliver the lecture and in the process we forgot to build a relation with our students and thus with building eq in ourselves building high emotional intelligence in ourselves we will be able to reconnect with the students and provide them not only with the necessary skills they need to conquer the uh, subject but also to conquer their life so how uh, 
EQ could be seen in a teacher. A teacher with high EQ has self knowledge. They know what their emotion is, what their thoughts are, and they become more self aware. A teacher with high emotional control will also be able to control the chaotic classroom situation or a stressful chaotic situation, and would able to dominate the impulsiveness. There are various teachers who are not able to control the classroom. They are not able to exert the uh, their control in the classroom. There are two spectrums of teacher. One where the teacher has zero control over the class, or second where the teacher has run such a tight ship that the students they are not able to emotionally express themselves. So the issue is not to fall on both of the spectrum. One should find the middle ground between them, where then the teacher is able to dominate also, and at the same time gives enough freedom to students to able to express themselves emotionally. The good teacher, good emotionally intelligent teacher, is able to motivate the students, and uh, they are able to motivate themselves, and in turn motivate the students. A teacher with high emotional intelligence has an empathetic mindset, where they are able to communicate with the students and understand what they are going through, and help them to help and guide them throughout the journey, and help them to understand their emotions, help them to navigate through life. They have good social and leadership skills. they have to uh, start maybe one problem which is a teacher faces is that if they become too friendly with students they loses the authority so if someone who has high emotional intelligence they, it is possible for them to interact with the students in such a manner that do not that they do not lose the authority now what are the different ways in as a teacher we can improve our emotional quotient first is to use an assertive style of communicating an assertive style of communication goes a long way towards earning respect without coming as too aggressive or too passive people who are high emotionally intelligent high on emotional intelligence they are able to communicate their opinion and their needs in a direct manner while at the same time respecting others so in a classroom if i have to control a classroom i have an assertive style of communicating and at the same time i'm showing the students the respect which they deserve and second way to improve our eq is to respond instead of reacting when we face a situation we get an immediate reaction out of us that immediate reaction to a conflict is very bad that immediate reaction could be in in terms of outbursts of anger tear frustration and that outburst that sudden outburst could spoil a relationship so emotionally intelligent person they knows how to stay calm during the emotionally stressful situations they don't take any impulsive decisions decisions that could lead to a even a higher problem so if i know that i'm facing a conflict instead of reacting i'm responding it so i am using my logical brain i'm processing the information which i'm getting and then i am responding to that instead of just quickly reacting to the situation so what do we have to do in order to respond we have to understand that in times of conflict the goal is resolution and to make a conscious choice to ensure that our words and our actions are into responding to the the third thing which we as a teacher could do is that we can use active listening skills so what happens is that in most of the conversation people listen to speak most of the time when we are listening we are listening so that we get our turn to speak but emotionally intelligent people they listen for clarity they make sure that uh, they understand what is being said before responding if they have any questions they ask and not only verbal communication emotionally intelligent people they also focus on non verbal communications also so as a teacher we could develop a habit wherein when a student is sitting in a class and that student we are asking them question and they are not able to an answer probably we could read what the non verbal cues are maybe the student is nervous maybe the student is facing problem and then we can practice positive attitude we should not underestimate the power of our attitude a very negative attitude can affect the other person with us so emotionally intelligent people they have the awareness of moods of those around them and guard their attitude accordingly i know these students are feeling frustrated after a long day of class they are feeling tired 
and instead of bombarding them with the information maybe i can remodel my class in such a manner that the last class is not so heavy for them and they are able to leave the school leave the college with a positive mindset so i have as an individual i also have the authority to influence the behavior and attitude of those around me so i should maintain a positive attitude probably before going a class i had a very uh, serious meeting serious conversation by my with my hods with my deans or with my directors or my colleagues and i take that attitude to the class i enter the class with a very negative attitude i am very rude to the students to so the students who came there to learn they also lose interest in the class for me it would have been a single incident for them it would leave an overlasting impression so a very important way for us is a very important technique for us is to maintain a positive attitude leave the emotions which we are feeling at that point and enter the classroom with a very positive attitude if i emit positive uh, attitude the others around me would take it in and their negative attitude would be converted into positive attitude another very important aspect and i cannot stress it enough is empathize students these days they are so much equipped with social media wherein they are bombarded with information they don't know how to handle that information and that leads to frustration in them and that frustration can be seen in multiple manners when we are interacting with them so it is important for us as a teacher to empathize with them to show that emotional strength that emotional strength is there and make it as a strength and not a weakness there will be a mutual respect between students and teachers if the student, if the teacher is able to empathize with their students and then a teacher is at a position where they are considered to be leaders in of the class they are the one of the captains who navigate the ship so it is important for teacher to have an excellent leadership skill they should set a high standard for themselves and them as themselves they should set an example for others to follow this process of taking initiatives of helping them to take decision making of helping them to solve problems this will show us as a leaders of their group and then we will be we will be able to have a strong relationships with our students and lastly a teacher should be approachable and sociable so in order to improve our emotional skills we could try and become more sociable with not only our students but also our colleagues our life has been limited to our cubicles we don't even know who we interact to or what is going on in the lives of others we are only limited if we are uh, maybe i have a colleague whom i talk to every day but i don't even know when their birthday is until unless i don't see it on social media and that is the problem that is the lack of social skills so if i have to develop emotionally emotional intelligence in myself i need to be more sociable i need to be more approachable it should be easy for students to come to me with their problems i should not have a guard on me all the time so that a student feels very difficult to come to me and have a conversation to share their problem so they should have a very positive presence and how can you have a positive presence you can smile more you can be more approachable and you can be more sociable with others now after teachers we come to students so what is the role of emotional intelligence for students so if there has been multiple research in order to understand the emotional intelligence its roles in students life so the research have proven that students with high emotional intelligence can have better mental health better social health and better physical health so it means that a person who a student when they are having high emotional intelligence they are more prepared to handle the challenges the li university life which gives them they are able to lower their level of anxiety their level of depression they are they are more socially active and involved they are more healthy as compared to students with low emotional intelligence and they have a better chance of building bonds with their peers and their professors what are the qualities of emotionally intelligent students first of all they are positive we understand that university life is very different they have come from school and they entered higher education sector wherein they have faced a lot of challenges their whole life has changed from school to college but in entire situation a high emotional intelligent student they remain positive the second aspect is or the quality of highly emotionally intelligent student is that they know the people well they know that what are the natures and character of people we are uh, when we enter college we remember that we meet people for a new time for uh, for first time 
so for students it is very difficult to gel with other people but someone who has high emotional ei they are able to know people they are able to understand their characteristics and they are able to uh, uh, make a bond with them a student with high ei is op often able to identify what they are feeling and why they are feeling whatever they are feeling they are able to understand that today i am feeling frustrated because possibly something happened with my friend today i am feeling irritated because something probably happened at home or today i am feeling happy because i got good marks in my subject subject and i am feeling happy because of that so student are able to understand what they are feeling and what is the reason behind their feeling they are also able to accept change as i said earlier that coming from school to college is a very big change in a student's life their whole curriculum the whole teaching style they get more freedom everything changes and thus student with high ei are able to accept these changes which comes in their life they are they welcome their changes in their schools and gain success in um, all the world and one other important characteristic of a high ei pers student is that they set limits it is very important for students to set limits they should know when to say yes and when to say no it could be either positive or negative and they can answer well in any situation a person with high ei or student with high ei are not influenced by their peers for things which they don't want to do so they are very clear what they want to do and they are able to set limits on their situations they are also able to improve their weaknesses and they know their strength many a times when we go to class and we ask students what are your strengths or what are your weaknesses most of the time students are not able to answer that and that is the sign of low ei the students are not aware of their emotions and the students are not able to answer what their emotion what emotions are their weaknesses and what emotions are their strength so students with high emotional intelligence they know their strength and they work hard to remove any weaknesses in them and they try to overcome those weaknesses and improve their strength the students with high ei make everything interesting so i understand that in a college in a, in a year we as a student we study lot of subjects few subjects could be of our interest few sub so the students with high ei they are able to make the work make the studies which they find are interesting interesting whatever work is assigned to them whatever assignment is assigned to them if any responsibility is given to the student it is not boring to them and they do and they love whatever work is given to them and lastly these students they avoid comparison as a teacher also we compare most of the students in our mind and this puts a lot of pressure on students so students with high e yeah they try to avoid the comparisons because of the comparisons uh, it is a basic sign that if we are compared to someone else and fall short then we feel unhappy or we feel sad but students with high emotional intelligence they try to avoid this stressful situation by not comparing them with others they are content in whatever they have achieved so what are the tips which we can give to our students to improve eq the first tip which we can share to with our students is to notice how they are feeling it is important for students to notice whatever is going in their mind what the emotions they are feeling at that time and understand the underlying reason behind that emotions the second uh, tip which we can suggest to a student is to predict your emotions we can ask our students to understand the underlying reasons behind a emotion which they feel and if that reason comes in future they can predict how they are going to feel so for example a student who keeps on comparing themselves with others get less marks in their uh, class test and because of that they feel frustrated they feel sad they feel angry so next time that when that student is about to give an exam they'll be mentally prepared that if i get bad marks i might feel angry or might feel sad so they are predicting their emotions in advance and because they are able to predict their emotions in advance they will be able to control their emotions in a better manner it would also helps the student to keep a diary to improve their eq if a student is keeping a diary wherein they are noting all the day to day activities which has happened and what they are feeling because of those activities they can find a underlying pattern they can find that this activity led to this emotion so then they will be able to uh, manage their emotion in better manner 
we can also ask the students to channel the emotions which they are feeling creatively most of the times the student around us they don't get a channel for their emotions and because of them they become disruptive in nature so we can ask the students to rather than bottling up their emotions we can ask them to channel those emotions in a creative manner we can also make a student see failures as an opportunity as i mentioned earlier that one of the signs of high emotionally intelligent student is that they are able to identify their strength and weaknesses so any opportunity which our students face if they fall short if they are facing failure in those opportunities we can ask them to see this as a platform wherein they can rise they can remove those weaknesses because of which they are facing the failure and improve within themselves we can also ask the students to practice active listening again listening should not be done in order to respond listening should be done in order to understand what the other person is trying to say and remove any doubt this active listening would help our students to develop better relations with their peers and have an everlasting impact on their career we can also ask the student to maintain a positive attitude a college or a university is just a start of their life they till uh, their school their students are very protected from they are sheltered from their family with their family they are sheltered by their teachers and because of them they do not because of that they do not face any hurdles in their life but when it comes to college the student has gone out of the house the student starts living in a hostel or a pg the student starts interacting with different uh, people from different background the student starts getting responsibilities because of which it is obvious that they can get a negative attitude and it is important to uh, explain to our students how important the importance of positive attitude and how well they can use that positive attitude to succeed in their life and another tip which we can which students can use to improve their eq is responding to the conflict so there are two response there are two ways in which we can respond to a conflict one way is the reaction where the reaction comes suddenly if i face a conflict i'm going to react and that react can be a sudden outburst of emotions we have to move our students from reacting to responding we have to cultivate in them different techniques wherein they take the information which we they get during a conflict process it and then respond to it in a manner that leads to solution of a conflict rather than increasing it now a question which comes in our mind is how an organization can or an institution can help to develop emotional intelligence in the students and their teachers so one of the important thing is that the supervisors or the managers in an institution they should show them emotional intelligent behavior themselves they should model the ei behaviors so that other feel motivated to copy those behaviors and to respond in a same manner another thing which the organization can do is then they can set norms they can set rules they can set few guidelines on how people should communicate with each other and what to do if there is a disagreement between people they can also recognize and celebrate those people who exhibit emotional intelligence so if for example an individual has been given a difficult task and in that difficult task the person has reacted very calmly very positively they were able to manage others they were able to control the emotions of others then that person should be recognized and celebrated this would get others to uh, exhibit the same behavior to model the same behavior in themselves another important thing which an organization can do is that they can start making heroes of people who help other people we all talk about team work but we always forget that it is not one person who got to the top of the mountain people who have helped them to reach the top so team works in the same manner the one person can be the limelight of a team but it is the strength of all the team members that has collectively helped them to reach the top of the mountain so we have to as an institute they have to encourage the good team behavior recognize it and call it out whenever it is exhibited a uh, institution especially educational institution should design workshops and seminars for educators which would help them to tackle which would help them to explain the importance of ei and help them to tackle the situations which they face in their life it would equip them with st strategies which they can use in classroom to manage not only their emotions but also the emotions of their students
also institutes can add emotional intelligence in a in their curriculum with different subjects which throughout their curriculum in different subjects which would help the students to understand how they can apply ei in operations how they can apply ei in marketing how they can apply ei in hr or organizational behavior the organization cannot institutes should not only stop by on teacher students they should also take one step ahead and set workshop for parents because the two people two parties with the students react in interactively is teachers and parents so educational institute should set the workshop for parents to encourage them to develop the emotional intelligence of these students the parents will be well equipped to handle the emotional intelligence of the uh, students to help them to guide them through the life the emotional intelligence uh, should be used as a study in colleges of education because of the introduction of emotional intelligence in the education sector a student would become well equipped to handle the life process in which institutes can do is that they can promote and conduct deeper research in this matter because emotional intelligence as a topic has come into existence in recent years in 1990s so a lot of things have to be studied emotional intelligence and institutes are one of the key areas who can promote this research and who can investigate into topic more so overall emotional intelligence is a very deeper part into lives of students of teachers of everybody and as to teachers it becomes our responsibility we have been given the responsibility of students on us and it becomes our responsibility to handle that emo our emotions and help our students to identify their emotions and equip them with tools and strategies so that they can uh, control their emotions they can manage their emotions and build an everlasting relationships with their peers throughout their life thank you everyone i am open for q and a session Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, any of the participants, in case they would like to have a Q and A with ma'am, can have a conversation in the chat box. You can type in your questions in the chat box, and ma'am can take the answers. And ma'am, by the time uh, we are taking questions from other faculties, if you can just show some light on uh, today, we have discussed on how emotional intelligence is important in the education sector. So, if we can throw some light on how other fields uh, can benefit from the same, and whether the applications which you have told today and the way it works in the education sector, does it works the same way in the other sectors, or there is a difference in the same? right uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, so emotional intelligence is something which we is required in all the field uh, let it be marketing let it be hr because whenever as a human being it is obvious for us to go through life feeling various emotions so if you are well equipped to handle our emotions then we will be able to be successful in all the fields of a career it doesn't matter whether we are working in a cubicle or we are going out and interacting with others i understand that as a teacher we have been given the responsibility that as a we have to handle students they are not one student who is associated with us but around 100 150 students who are associated with us and we have to help them to reach their full potential and it is only possible when we ourselves have full control on our emotions maybe probably i'll give you just an example that as a as a faculty probably i had a bad morning in the uh, i had a bad morning and uh, when i reach the college i take out the frustration on my students so that is the sign of a emotionally weak uh, faculty so uh, i uh, i suggest that the tips and techniques which i have shared it can be applied to all the field it doesn't matter that today we are here we are talking about educational sector so it should be applied only in the educational sector it can be taken as a base 
and modifications can be made and applied to all the sectors and uh, anybody rather be faculty or somebody who's working in marketing and interacting with different customers or anybody who's working in hr and interacting with employees can use this and develop themselves as well as develop the relationships with others thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you thanks a lot thank you Uh, can we have questions from any other faculties? <coughs> Ma'am, I believe uh, the way in which you have uh, completely explained uh, the topic in such a uh, brilliant way is something that is the reason that we must uh, so too, with our session. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing with us your thoughts on the topic of emotional quotient. Um, and you have rightly said that the emotional quotient has become a very important and crucial part of our working life. And uh, I believe that it can uh, it is something that we can no longer ignore. So thank you for sharing your insights with us on how we can improve our EQ and in turn, how we can improve our students' EQ as well. So I guess it's a slide. So much, uh, I'm sure each and everyone here can derive some benefit of, from it. So thank you so much, man. Thank you so much thank for you. your lecture. Thank you. Uh, my request to all the participants to kindly be patient for another five minutes. Our uh, guest for the session, uh, second session will be joining uh, us in a minute or so. I request your patience for five more minutes. Thank you so much. Uh, very good afternoon, uh, Mr. Faisal. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, madam. You are audible. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce you to our speaker for the second afternoon session, uh, Mr. Malik Rashid Faisal, Assistant Regional Director, IGNU Regional Center, Delhi. Uh, sir has completed uh, MA from IGNU and his MPhil and PhD from JNU New Delhi. Uh, he has also completed advanced diploma in mass media. Uh, Sir so has handled many significant positions throughout his career, including working as editor, Span Magazine, U.S. Embassy, before joining IGNU in 2012. 
Uh, sir, I welcome you on behalf of IMT College of Management and request you to kindly start the session on use of online videos and live streaming in education. Are you able to uh, see my presentation? Uh, yes, sir, it is visible. OK, OK. So it is on uh, full screen or? Uh, so it's not full screen at the moment. OK. Good afternoon, participants. This is uh, as uh, Madam introduced me, uh, Dr. Malik Rashid Faisal. I am working as assistant regional director in IGNU Regional Center in Delhi 3. So there are uh, three regional centers uh, in Delhi. Delhi 1, Delhi 2, Delhi 3. Uh, so I am working in Delhi 3. Uh, <clears throat> earlier I was uh, working uh, in Aligarh Regional Center and uh, before that I uh, worked in Span magazine. That is a magazine uh, which is published from American Embassy. So let us start my uh, presentation. Uh, before starting, uh, I should uh, let you know that I am not expert in this field. I am uh, learning like you, but I, am, I have tried my best to uh, give you the best presentation. Uh, <clears throat> so my topic is use of online videos and uh, live streaming in education. Since uh, I am connected with the education sector uh, and uh, uh, IGNU, as you know, is the largest university of the world uh, and uh, it is uh, playing a leading role in particularly in uh, streaming and uh, online videos through YouTube and Facebook and uh, connecting uh, the students uh, through uh, these channels. Uh, and there are uh, different platforms uh, of uh, IGNU like uh, SWAM and all that. The so teachers are also uh, working on that and the students are connected. So let me uh, present here. Uh, as you know, uh, COVID has affected uh, all of us. So we can categorize, uh, I mean, uh, two uh, uh, sections like uh, BC before COVID and AC after COVID. So uh, because uh, uh, this COVID has significantly uh, affected the life of everyone. And uh, there is influence of digital videos on everyday life. So uh, we can say that the deadly and uh, infectious disease uh, coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, has deeply affected the global economy. This uh, tragedy has also shaken up the education sector and this fear is likely to resonate across the education sector globally. The uh, COVID-19 pandemic outbreak forced many schools and colleges to remain closed uh, temporarily. Several areas are affected worldwide and there is fear of losing this whole ongoing semester or year or even more in the coming future. Various schools, colleges and universities have discontinued in person teaching. As per the assessment of the researchers, you can say it is uncertain to uh, get back to normal teaching anytime soon. As social distancing is preeminent at this stage, this will have negative effects on learning opportunities. Educational units are struggling to find options on learning op uh, opportunities. Educational units are struggling to find options to deal with this challenging, challenging situation. These such circumstances make us realize that senior planning is an urgent and for academic institutions, this is a situation that demands humanity and unity. There is an urgent need to protect and save our students, faculty, academic staff, communities, societies, and the nation as a whole. Many universities around the world have fully digitalized their operations, understanding the dire need of this current situation. Online learning is emerging as a picture, I mean, this chaos, 
Therefore, the quality of enhancement of online teaching learning is crucial at this stage. Online education, as you know, in Chinese universities has increased exponentially after the COVID-19 outbreak. And not only Chinese universities, but uh, across the world. There was an overnight shift of normal classrooms into e-classrooms. That is, educators have shifted the, their entire pedagogical approach to tackle new market conditions and adapt to the changing situations. During this tough time, the concern is not about whether online teaching learning methods can provide quality education. It is uh, rather how academic institutions will be able to adopt online learning in such a massive manner. Now, the question is, why do you why do you use online video in education? There are so many advantages and benefits of using online video in education. Particularly, we can say that the complex concepts and procedures are uh, becoming becoming easy for students and teachers. Enhanced comprehension and knowledge retention, support for multi-modal learning, develops proficiency in digital literacy, broader audience use and reuse re flexibility. These are benefits and advantages of online education. We can use and reuse because, because these online videos are recorded and then we can uh, use according to our own pace. Individual control of, uh, control of pacing and particularly it is useful in audio ODL because the ODL open and distance learners are uh, remain aloof from the institutions. Uh, they require their own pacing. That's why uh, ODL institutions provide a uh, very good number of online video in uh, the in their uh, platform or particularly also it is very <laughs> cost effective because the uh, the, uh, the the cost is very low uh, i can give you the example of igno the the programs uh, being offered by igno are very cost effective to the learners so there are many online video platforms video hosting platforms that provide tools for creating videos in education there are different excuse uh, me sir yes. i'm sorry to interrupt you but uh, is it possible for you if you can restart your uh, uh, presentation again because it is not moving further ahead sir it is not moving no sir it is not moving ahead okay yes sir it is going back uh, no sir it is still stuck on the very first slide which is there So are you able to see my first slide? Yes, sir. I'm able to see your first slide. And now this is second slide. Uh, yes, sir. Now it is moving. Now it is moving. OK, it means Thank you, sir. Uh, let us do like that. Uh, OK, yes. so uh, I told you about the uh, uh, e-learning explosion COVID era and before COVID era. Before COVID, we knew uh, that uh, everyone was attached to uh, his institutions. Uh, we went to the colleges, universities, and uh, interacted with the teachers. But now, here after COVID, there is social distancing. So uh, we we can say that uh, there are platforms, particularly uh, online YouTube and uh, uh, Facebook and other other uh, platforms, which which can provide you live streaming and uh, live videos. So uh, the, mm, the the tragedy of the COVID-19 has also shaken up the education sector, as you know, and this fear is likely to resonate across the education sector globally. And many universities around the world have fully digitalized their operations, understanding the dire need of this current situation. Online learning is emerging as a picture Leodorum amidst the chaos. Therefore, the quality enhancement of online teaching learning is crucial at this stage. Online education in Chinese universities and other universities has increased exponentially after the COVID-19 outbreak. There was 
and overnight shift of normal classrooms into e classrooms. Now we are aware about e classrooms after COVID, and before COVID, we it, it was not that much uh, prevalent. So uh, there 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 uh, is a time I mean divide before COVID and after COVID BC and AC. So there was an overnight shift of normal classrooms into e classrooms. Uh, that is, educators have shifted their entire pedagogical approach to tackle new market conditions and adapt to the changing situations. During this uh, tough time, the concern is not about whether online uh, teaching learning methods but uh, that can provide quality education. It is rather how academic institutions will be able to adapt online learning in such a massive manner. do not have access to the right technology. There is evidence that learning online can be more effective in a number of says some research shows that an, on average students retain 25 to 60 percent more uh, material when learning online compared to only 8 to 10 percent. This is mostly due to the students being able to learn faster online. E-learning requires 40 to 60 percent less time and to learn than in a traditional classroom setting because the students can learn at their own pace, going back and rereading, skipping or accelerating through concepts and as they choose. So uh, is the slide is moving now? Is the slide moving? Uh, yes, sir, it is moving now. OK, OK. So nevertheless, the effectiveness of online learning varies amongst age groups. The general consensus on children, especially younger ones, is that a structured environment is required because kids are more easily distracted. To get the full benefit of online learning, there needs to be concerted effort to provide this structure and go beyond replicating a physical class or lecture through video capabilities and go beyond replicating a physical class and instead using a range of collaboration tools and engagement methods that promote inclusion, personalization and intelligence. Since studies have shown that children extensively use their senses to learn, making learning fun and effective through use of technology is crucial. So why to use online video education? There are these benefits and uh, uh, there is support for multimodal learning there is, uh, and de it develops proficiency and in digital literacy and there is a broader audience use and use flexibility because we can record and then we can use it later on uh, according to our own pace. But particularly these videos are useful in ODL because the learners of ODL are uh, remain aloof from the institutions and uh, they are also remain engaged in other activities like uh, jobs etc. So it, these videos enhance their knowledge and their proficiency. Particularly it is also uh, cost effective. So there are uh, online video platforms video hosting platforms that provide tools for creating videos in education. I have listed some of the video platforms. And these platforms are very useful. For as a tools for uh, creating videos or uh, providing videos in education. Darkast. Offers a Dedicated education video solution that supports both live and on demand video streaming. Darkast is a great option for both independent educators and large institutions. It has a Zoom live streaming integration that makes it possible to stream Zoom conference calls to a live audience. This is valuable tool for teachers that want to stream collaborative lectures. The second 
platform I have mentioned is Anoto. Anoto is, is an education video platform that was designed specifically for universities and other large institutions. This platform solution includes dedicated software for lecture capture. It also offers integrations for learning management system, which are very available for educators. Overall, Panopto is focused on online video hosting and management. It has powerful tools for video organization, and it is great for creating internal video libraries. The third video platform I have mentioned is Kaltura. It is an open source streaming platform that supports live and on demand learning. Although Kaltura serves all broadcast broadcasters with advanced streaming needs, it is particularly popular among large educational institutions. Since this platform uses an open source structure, users can integrate different apps and programs to customize the education streaming experience. As aside from its extensive customizability, Kaltura is known for its powerful video player, secure streaming and reliable content delivery. The next one I have mentioned is Brightcove. Brightcove is an online platform that supports cloud encoding, live streaming and VOD hosting. This platform is known for its highly professional tools that are designed for streaming at an advanced level. Bright Cove typically targets an enterprise audience, but its feature offering is suitable for educational institutions. The next one is Movie. Movie is a video streaming platform that offers a dedicated e-learning video solution. Movie specialization specializes in OTT streaming and offers a wide range of tools for hosting education content. These tools include video monetization, API access, white level streaming, audio hosting and more. The best part is that it is managed and controlled by a single CMS. IBM Cloud Video that offers a wide range of tools for education live streaming. It is an online video platform that offers wide range and this platform offers plans for a wide range of budgets starting at $1.99 per month. Some of IBM Cloud Video's top features for education streaming include content management, global content delivery, automated closed captioning, live polling and video analytics. Zype, Zype video streaming. Zype is high ticket video streaming solution for educational institutions. It is quite expensive with plans ranging from dollar five hundred to dollar five thousand per month. So it is best suited for educational institutions and organizations with significant needs and equally significant budgets. Regarding to Zype's website, the platform is capable of simplified content management, seamless subscription management and support for launching your own apps for limitless learning. These characteristics are all great for streaming for educational purpose. Vplate is the next platform, video platform, is a streaming platform that is well suited for education streaming. It supports both live and on demand video hosting and a slew of professional streaming features. Vplay offers a dedicated solution for educators that includes support for some specialized tools. These include lectures capture and flipped classrooms, scheduled live lectures, one on one tutoring and more. The next one is Syncopa. This is multiple multimedia hosting platform designed for storing and managing video. If you are looking for to host multiple types of media files for your remote education setup, Syncopa may be an option for you. Syncopa has dedicated 
video and media solution for education. Since Syncopa offers pricing plans starting at $1.9 per month, it is a great option for educational institutions of all sizes. Live stream is the next one. And last one I have mentioned. It's a high end video hosting service that is owned by Vimeo. It supports both live and on demand video streaming. This platform offers a dedicated education video solution that includes powerful content management. This solution is equipped with all tools that educators need, including secure streaming, advanced privacy control controls and password protection, white label streaming and video monetization. Live stream also includes access to Vimeo live API, which helps educators customize their streaming experience. Now, the next slide I have mentioned is. I have selected uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live as major player of uh, the industry. So, Facebook Live, uh, live transmission of uh, various types of media that are broadcasted without a significant delay. Uh, there is no scope of editing and can be reused wider reach and have option of interactions. Since its debut in 2016, live streaming video uh, has exploded in popularity. It, in fact, at 82% of people would prefer a live video over reading a social post. It offers the opportunity to forge a more authentic and valuable connection with audiences. It is no secret that live streaming has taken off in a major way. In fact, the total number of hours watched on major streaming platforms grew 99% from 2019 to 2020. Facebook users have eagerly streaming platforms grew 99% from 2019 to 2020. And it has the advantage of popularity of live streaming. Live streaming. Now, one in every five videos on Facebook is, you know, it is live. Facebook Live is a Facebook feature used to broadcast real time video or to Facebook. Live broadcasters can use this content to engage their audience during moments and events that are important to them. Going live problem, uh, going provides real time engagement and can help increase exposure and build relationships with your audience. Facebook Live started as a mobile only broadcasting feature, but now Facebook pages can broadcast from either mobile devices or desktop computers. Now we, uh, we can see how uh, to go live on Facebook from the Facebook app. So basic requirements for a live broadcast. Uh, as you can see, have, first you have, have an account, Facebook account and uh, YouTube channel, recent device, laptop, PC or mobile, ready content, presentable appearance, ready to move or even if something slip mistakes. So there are certain steps for being live, uh, but before that, I would like to mention the bandwidth requirements. Bandwidth requirements for video live streaming. It is internet speed for live streaming increases each time you step up the video quality, SD, HD, full HD. And uh, for normal video, live video, recommended maximum bit rate is 4000 kbps, that is 4 mbps. Recommended audio bit rate is 96 kbps or 128 kbps. The maximum 1080 resolution at 60 frames per second. For streaming, for streaming HD video, a minimum upload speed of 5 mbps is required. And ideally, it should have at least 10 mbps.
So steps for normal Facebook live. How to go live on Facebook uh, from the Facebook app? Step one, go to the profile page, group or event where you want to go live. Step two, click what is on your mind. If you are on a profile, create a post and if you are on a page, it should open the post options. Step three, click live video in the post options. Step four, tap where it says tap to add a description to add information about this video. Step five, use the buttons on the bottom to configure the settings and any features or tools you want to use during stream. Step six, tap start live video when you are ready. How to go live on Facebook from a web browser? Web browser steps. Step one on your Facebook home page, you should see a live or live video option. If you are on a profile, it will be under what is on your mind. If you are on anything else, it, it will be under create post. The icon will look like one of these below. Step two, uh, choose to simply go live or to create live video event. Step three, then choose details for your video. These include a start time, a title and description, who to invite as a co-host and various audio and video controls. Step four, click go live in the bottom left corner when you are ready. So these are various steps that uh, for mobile and uh, web browser. Now, YouTube Live. YouTube Live, it is very popular. And particularly, all the institutions, I can say, all the universities, colleges are using this YouTube streaming live, and different videos are uploaded on the YouTube channel, which can be seen uh, later at any time. So there is a flexibility. So what are the requirements for YouTube Live? You need to have a YouTube channel, but uh, the channel gets activated within 24 hours of creation. It is not immediately activated. YouTube Live is a YouTube uh, streaming live streaming feature which enables content creators to interact with the audience in real time via video and chat. Users can watch trending live streams in their country by clicking on live from the left hand sidebar on YouTube via desktop. When you go live, your live streams can also be displayed on your audience's personalized YouTube feeds. Previously watched or liked your content or interacted with content that is similar to yours. YouTube is the second largest live streaming platform in the world. It, the website, the website of, uh, the, the website has over 2 billion monthly active users. That is more than six times the US population. You can imagine the popularity of YouTube from this figure. How to, is now, I'm describing you about how to start streaming with YouTube Live. Before you start this, uh, live streaming on YouTube, make sure you have set up your channel and all your equipment for going live. Before you can go live on YouTube, you need to enable live streaming on your device or devices. If you are using a web browser, follow the, these steps. Number one, open YouTube in your browser. Then click on the create symbol at the top. Then click on go live. Verify your channel. If you haven't already verified your channel, then wait until live streaming is enabled. This may take, as I told you, it may take 24 hours. If you are using a mobile device or tablet, like uh, Android, iPhone or iPad, the following steps may be 
followed like uh, open the YouTube app. Click on the create symbol at the bottom. Click on go live, wait until live streaming is enabled. This may take 24 hours. You need at least 1000 subscribers to enable live streaming on mobile. So you at least 1000 subscribers uh, you are required for uh, enabling live streaming on your mobile. YouTube lets you live stream using one of the three different recording options. Mobile for mobile to go live from your mobile device such as phone or tablet. You need to have a verified YouTube channel with at least 1000 subscribers. This is a good option for vlogging or, or sharing quick updates on the go. And if you talk about the webcam, so with, with, the, with this option, all you need to go live with a computer and a webcam. This is useful for simple live streams that don't require too many resources. You will just be filming yourself or anyone else in front of your computer. For example, you can conduct a quick question and answer session or share your thoughts on a specific topic. Throw encoder. You can also go through encoder live. You, you may go live if you want to share your uh, screen in your uh, live stream or use multiple cameras, microphones and other hardware. You need to choose the encoder options. This is ideal for gaming streams, concerts, business events, podcast and interactive presentations. Now I will like to tell you how to go stream on mobile or tablet. Open the YouTube app, click the create go live at the bottom. Type more options to schedule your stream for later and adjust setting for age restrictions, live chat, monetization and more. To share your phone screen, click on create channel, share a screen. Type go live to start streaming. To end your live stream, click on finish. How to live stream using a computer and webcam? Sign in to YouTube in your browser. Click on create, then go live in the top right corner. Select webcam from the left. Add a title and description and set the privacy. Select more options. Advanced settings for additional settings you want to set. Click on the next to capture a thumbnail with your camera. Ensure you have selected the right webcam and microphone. Tap go live to start streaming. Click on edit to adjust settings for privacy, monetization, live chat and more. Tap end stream at the bottom when you are done live streaming. Then let us talk about how to live stream using on an encoder. Sign in to YouTube, click on create and go live to enable live streaming. Tap stream on your left and click on create stream. Install on encoder. Correct any additional hardware such as cameras or mics. Connect your encoder by entering your YouTube live server URL and stream key. Start streaming. For users, let us also note that for users aged uh, 13 to 17, the default privacy setting is set to private or unlisted. This means the stream is not going to show up in search results or recommendations for users aged 18 plus. The live stream privacy, privacy will be set to public by default. And the content of your live stream should adhere to YouTube's community guidelines and terms of service. If you fail to meet the guidelines, YouTube may restrict your content or remove it from platform altogether. And additionally, restriction on your live stream may result in uh, may result in a strike on you, your YouTube channel, which can prevent you from going live for 14 days. So these uh, these restrictions should be noted down because if you violate the policy of the YouTube, uh, uh, the it can prevent you from going live for 14 days. So these are two main famous and popular live streaming platforms, Facebook and live. 
there are some copyright issues also so you need to read the copyright issues in all the terms and conditions of uh, both the facebook and uh, uh, youtube now i i would like to uh, in the last slide i would like to point uh, that ignu as you know or maybe aware about ignu it is the best example for streaming videos and uh, webcasting videos for educational purpose let me uh, introduce ignu uh, because it will be i mean very good example for you indra gandhi national open university established by an act of parliament in 1985 has continuously striving to build an inclusive knowledge society through inclusive education it has tried to increase the gross enrollment ratio by offering high quality teaching through open and distance learning the university began by offering two academic programs in 1987 and that the, these two programs were diploma in management and diploma in distance education with a strength of 4528 students at that time uh, the figure was only about 5000 but now the university has uh, 35 lakh like students enrolled currently they are pursuing 35 35 lakh like students are there so th that's why this university is called the largest university of the world which is running in open and distance learning mode and uh, its different programs are also running in online mode uh, there are different platforms so i am going to tell uh, about you about uh, this university uh, that it serves the educational aspirations of over 3 million students in india and other countries through 21 schools of studies and a network of 67 regional centers around 2000 learner support centers and 20 overseas institutions it has also overseas institutions uh, the overseas students are also connected with this university and they have the facility of moving from uh, anywhere across the world from anywhere he, he or she can pursue the course right? because it has the uh, flexibility the university offers about 200 certificate diploma degree and doctoral programs with the strength of nearly 250 faculty members and 230 academic staff at the headquarters and regional centers and over 35000 academic counselors from conventional institutions uh, of higher learning professional organizations and industry among others the gyan darshan channel it is very uh, popular among the students of igno gyan darshan channel is a major milestone in the field of educational television in india it is a joint venture of the ministry of human resource development ministry of information and broadcasting prasar bharti and igno serving as the nodal agency launched in the year 2000 gyan darshan is a 24 hour educational channel which offers the best educational programs covering a variety of subjects and catering to a wide range of viewers these include preschool primary secondary and higher secondary students college university students youth seeking career opportunities homemakers and working professionals the software is pulled from various educational institutions and development organizations gyan darshan conducts Two hours of live interactive sessions every day to build interactivity in the open distance and distance learning system. Uh, now it has become 24 hours channel, and uh, every every minute you can watch uh, the uh, videos and uh, different educational programs. Both very effective educational programs are run by this channel. Induction programs for new students and convocations for graduating students are also conducted live. through teleconferencing every year gyan darshan is also available on webcast thus is extending the reach of igno programs to audiences world over 
the Gyan Darshan telecast is also beneficial for students uh, of the formal education system and the viewers can access Gyan Darshan on IGNU's website. That is ignuonline.ac.in. As Gyan Darshan channel is must uh, is must carry channel as per the Government of India gazette notification. A number of private DTH cable carriers Gyan Darshan in their pockets. Gyan Darshan is now part of the Swayam Prabha and can be watched on MHRD channel number 25. The second one is Gyan Dhara. Gyan Dhara is an internet radio counseling service offered by IGNU. Students can listen to the live discussions by the teachers and experts on the topic of the day and interact with them through telephone, email and also uh, chat mode. When live sessions are not on, Gyanwani Delhi is made available on this platform. The Gyandhara streaming is available for internet users anywhere in the world. Important events uh, broadcast by Gyanwani Delhi are also relayed by all Gyanwani stations using the Gyandhara feed. There is a YouTube channel of the university and its YouTube, YouTube channel name is e Gyan Kosh Igno. This is and the, these pro, the programs of the university are live stream live stream on this uh, YouTube channel. All the uh, programs of the university are, are also live streamed on Facebook and uh, other platforms. So uh, I would like to inform you that Igno has played a very leading role uh, in providing the online education to the society. So this is this is my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your insights, sir. Uh, and very rightly, sir, you have pointed out that uh, after COVID, uh, online platforms, online video platforms have emerged and changed the face of education completely. Almost, I guess, uh, all educational institutes now use uh, these online modes uh, for imparting the educations, and they have become a really crucial part of uh, the teaching learning process. So thank you so much for showing the intricacies that are there and the role that the IGNU is playing uh, in helping and uh, emerging as a, a crucial player in the education industry. So thank you so much, sir, for taking out your precious time uh, for this session. Thank you so much, sir. And my uh, big thank you to all the participants, uh, all the faculties and academicians who are present here with us. Thank you so much for your uh, patience and thank you so much for your presence. Have a good day. Sir, I do have a question. If you permit me that I can ask. Oh, 
Hello. मैं आप बाहर आप करता हूँ 